Coca-Cola is a world-famous beverage manufacturer, and like every corporation, they too have skeletons in its closet. Hello, and welcome to our channel. Today, we are going to take a look back at how Coca-Cola has managed to remain on top of the beverage industry and how they've managed to control their respective markets. So if you really want to find out the dirt on the company behind your favorite drink, then stay tuned till the end of the video. Let's start with a little bit of history. The genesis of Coca-Cola begins in 1886, when an Atlanta pharmacist named Dr. John S. Pemberton experimented with several flavors to create a soft drink that would sell well at soda fountains. He made a syrup with a variety of flavors and took it to the local pharmacy, where it was combined with carbonated water and rated wonderful by the customers who tried it. Frank M. Robinson, who was Dr. Pemberton's partner and bookkeeper, is credited with coming up with the name Coca-Cola and creating the distinctive, trademarked script still in use today. Coupons offering free samples of the drink were used in the first ever marketing campaigns for Coca-Cola. Couponing was a novel marketing strategy in 1887, and it was soon followed by newspaper ads and the distribution of promotional items displaying the Coca-Cola script to participating pharmacies. Today, there are almost 200 countries where Coca-Cola is consumed every day, and the number is a whopping 1.9 billion. The company has always been excited about improving how it interacts with its customers. Coca-Cola is the largest producer and licensor of non-alcoholic beverages in the world, thanks in great part to its effective marketing strategy, which has revitalized the people throughout the years. But not everything can be attributed to the creativity of the Coca-Cola marketing department. Their executives have been involved in shady practices, which have allowed the company to grow even bigger. We all know that Coca-Cola is full of sugar and caffeine, which means that it isn't healthy for regular consumption. Well, Coca-Cola has long supported research linking inactivity to diet-related disorders like obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. In 2015, they started giving money to the nonprofit Global Energy Balance Network, whose vice president says there is actually absolutely no strong evidence that overeating and bad diet are linked to these illnesses. This is obviously not true, given the strong correlation between lack of access to good food and lack of nutrition knowledge and the aforementioned disorders. Since the usage of full-calorie sodas has declined by 25% over the last two decades, Coca-Cola has been utilizing this argument to deflect concerns about the detrimental effects of their sugary drinks. Without the pockets of Coca-Cola stuffs with money to safeguard their reputation, it would be simple to overlook this unscrupulous behavior as just a failed effort to recover their firm. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics a &D, recognizes Coca-Cola as a valid supplier of continuing education for its members. Coca-Cola promotes the idea that sugar is harmless, that aspartame is 100% safe, and that the Institute of Medicine is being overly severe with its school nutrition requirements, despite the fact that school lunches are everything from enticing and nutritious. In light of the a and approved messages, it's easy to see why people who lack a good education on nutrition might not be quick to associate unhealthy foods and beverages with the most frequent, costly, and preventable diseases that are widespread in the U.S. You can see this from the way they're promoting their Diet Coke. Diet sodas are notorious for containing cancer-causing artificial sweeteners, including aspartame, cyclamates, and saturin. The marketing of Coca-Cola's Diet Coke exemplifies unethical business practices by making false claims about the beverage's health benefits. Coca-Cola's marketing push was bolstered by Carl Lagerfeld, the Chanel designer, after he claimed to have shed 80 pounds by drinking only Diet Coke. If you ask Carl, he'll say, I drink Diet Coke from the time I get up till the time I go to sleep. Nothing except water for me, though. With the famous fashion designer as the face of the Diet Coke campaign, marketing to women has reached new heights. Diet Coke cans have been a staple in every model and celebrity's manicured hand since the products launched 30 years ago. Coca-Cola has also had issues in India at its bottling plants, where the company has been accused of depleting groundwater supplies and contaminating the water supply. 
Center for Science and Environment CSE tests on soft drinks made in India by Coca-Cola and other corporations in 2003 found extremely high amounts of pesticides from the use of contaminated groundwater. An Indian parliamentary committee helped draft the first set of guidelines for pesticides in soft drinks in 2004. Sales were momentarily reduced by 15% despite denials from Coca-Cola, which claimed its water was filtered and its finished goods were checked before release. Coca-Cola was also accused of polluting the groundwater in the Indian city of Varanasi with its effluent. It was confirmed by corporate officials that the factory indeed did have a wastewater problem, but they claimed that a new pipeline had been constructed to fix it. Yet in the early 2000s, a number of experiments were done on the sludge created by Coca-Cola's operation in India. The Central Pollution Control Board of India and the BBC conducted the testing, and they found toxic results. In June 1999, some 30 children in Belgium fell ill after ingesting Coke products, marking the beginning of what would become the most damaging crisis in Coca-Cola's history. The situation worsened despite the corporation issuing a limited product recall. In the end, the Belgian government mandated the recall of all Coca-Cola products, prompting similar actions by authorities in neighboring countries, including Luxembourg and the Netherlands. Coca-Cola concluded that a poorly processed batch of carbon dioxide was to blame for the illnesses. Coca-Cola took several days to give a response to the situation, and their delay was widely reported in the media. As a result of dismissing the matter as trivial, the company did not launch a thorough investigation right away. The public relations disaster that ensued was caused by the sluggish response time. Almost immediately, French officials reported more than 100 cases of illness linked to tainted Coke, prompting the country to temporarily prohibit all Coca-Cola products. Shortly after, Poland received a batch of Moldy Banakwa, a new Coca-Cola water product. In December 1999, Belgium ordered Coca-Cola to cease the Restore marketing campaign it had undertaken to rebuild customer trust and sales in Belgium, thus exacerbating the contamination situation. A competitor company complained that the campaign's tactics, which included giving away free cases of the product, Offering discounts to wholesalers and retailers, and employing more people to work in promotion, were all against the law. In light of Belgium's stringent antitrust rules, the claim was upheld, and Coca-Cola was then forced to withdraw the promotion. Taking this action after the last crisis substantially weakened Coca-Cola's position in the European market. Now, have you guys tried the Fairlife milk? Well, it's another one of Coca-Cola's products. Undercover films obtained in June 2019 depict the horrendous maltreatment of dairy cows and their calves at Fair Oaks Farm in Indiana, Fairlife's principal supplier. Animal Recovery Mission's investigation also found that, contrary to the farm's claims, male calves are shipped off to veal farms from Fair Oaks. Fairlife halted deliveries from the farm after the video surfaced and allegedly enhanced audits of its other dairy suppliers. Despite the company's denials, Coca-Cola has had complete say over Fairlife's policies and procedures, particularly those pertaining to animals' well-being. Even if the business wasn't aware of the farm's conditions, doing so would still be the worst kind of animal neglect. Now, Coca-Cola has also been involved in violence and racial discrimination, but somehow the company has managed to get out of all of these issues. Maybe it's due to the paying off of or donating to powerful politicians. One such incident came out when Coca-Cola donated $40,000 to the campaign of some U.S. senators who had voted in favor of an anti-abortion bill. This incident also came to light in 2019, so it wasn't that far back. Despite all these issues, the company has continued to maintain a loyal customer base. This could be the result of its impeccable marketing team. Remember the Share a Coke campaign? Well, you definitely have to be at the top of your game to pull something this extensive off. But it worked. And in the end, the campaign raised Coke sales and introduced it to a new generation that no longer considered soda relevant. Despite Coke's criminal negligence and in some cases direct involvement, the company has continued to maintain and even expand its extensive customer base. Other than that, 
Their marketing game has been on point throughout all these issues, and they have continued to represent Coke as a fun-loving and refreshing brand, a fact that is far from reality.